You can still set goals if you don't have your final numbers. Just set a percentage of what you're looking at. We can have amazing ideas and we know that it's a great thing for the agency, but maybe that's something that's six months or 12 months down the road and we need to focus on some shorter term goals now to set everybody up for success in the long run. Here's the facts. Here's the proof. How do we help you? Either the person wants to step up and do that thing or they won't. All right. Welcome to another edition of the Ridiculously Amazing Insurance Agent Podcast. It's October, which means we are focused this whole month on setting goals, getting ready for next year, ending this year strong. I know some of you are just worried about what your dog's going to wear to dog Mm -hmm. daycare on Halloween. That is a big concern of mine. Dog pet costumes sell out very early. And the good ones are custom. So don't tell my dog that. (laughs) I already called her. Last year, she was a lobster. (laughs) So you got to go for the cute factor with the dogs, you know. (laughs) But we always like to say when pumpkins pop up, it's time to start the process. And in particular, today, we're going to dive into how do you set goals? How do you set insurance agency goals? And I know many people might be struggling. Well, we don't have the end of year numbers yet, right? We only have the first half of the year, the first three quarters of the year. How am I supposed to set numbers? I'm going to give everybody the top secret dirty little trick right now. You just set a percentage, right? We want to sell 15% more than last year. We want our retention to be, you know, a point higher than last year. Whatever it is, you can say it, whatever we end the year at, I want to be at X 10% more premium. So you can still set goals if you don't have your final numbers, just set a percentage of what you're looking at. And also what we do a lot of times, like with our budget is we project, we just say, we have 75% of the data, take an average, assume the last three months are going to be about the same, plop them in, and you'll be close, right? You might need to make some final tweaks if a big whopper of a deal comes through. But I think the first step I want to talk about here today is, one, why are goals so important? But also, why do people not love setting goals? Even like personally, right? You know, like we got it all inspired on New Year's Eve, and I'm like, I am literally going to fit into the pants I wore when I was 18. <laughs> Are we? Well, probably not. I don't think I own any of the pants when I was 18. <laughs> and also, maybe I could fit in, but they would be a tight squeeze. Like, there'd be a, somebody might lose an eye with a button popping off. So just because you can fit into them doesn't mean you should, <laughs> just for the record. <laughs> and, and you know, I think it's like they we're all inspired sometimes here to be the best version of ourselves, but we're also intimidated by the work it takes to get there. So, Bobby, what do you think about insurance agencies setting goals? What are some of the pitfalls? Where do you see kind of that going right or wrong? I feel like sometimes we overthink our goals a little bit or we don't have a number. I think we find this a lot too, where agencies, maybe they're they're not tracking now. And so they don't even know where to start or how to find that number. They say, well, the carrier is paying me this and they're telling me my retention is that. And you're getting this off of carrier statements and what carriers are telling you. And then you're trying to compile all this data with, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 different carriers. So having having an understanding of what those goals should be. But we have to know what is our benchmark, too. I think understanding, you know, where is our benchmark? How do we get those things that I know we have a lot of tools that are available to help agencies really start to dive into that and understand where am I at? Because if I don't know where I'm at, I can't understand where I'm going. You know, I've got to understand, like, if I want to lose, you know, 20 pounds, where am I starting? And then I have to check in on that on a regular basis, too. So I think, you know, knowing what direction that we're going staying motivated to do that, meaning that we do have to check in and we have to then celebrate those wins when we get halfway to that goal. Awesome team. Great. We did a great job. And this will keep our team motivated working towards those goals, which then also motivates us as leaders to to stay on track and keep that bus moving forward. I also think in setting the goals, so in our, we have a strategic planning workbook that we've released in October. We think everybody should go get it. It's the lowest it's ever going to be until October 31st. So grab it. Even if you don't grab it, you're listening to November, grab it then. You know, we're still running specials on it. But 
we actually show you how what the reports to run and what to get. But mm-hmm. say you're looking at a report and you're like, I know this is wrong. And you get all huffy puffy, right? About your data. I know I'm talking to three people here that love data and that want it to be right. But that can also be a goal, right? Is mm-hmm. in 2025 to get your data correct because it's not going to get easier every year you go by. And there is no magical wand with a data fairy that's going to come be like, I have made your, you know, <laughs> your data perfect overnight because you have wished it <laughs> to fruition. You are not going to visualize your data being right without taking some action. So you have to also embrace the idea that maybe that is a clue that I need to go work through this and get it to be on track and accurate. But the future is data. It's not going to be feelings, at least in my mind. Right. Stephen, why don't you talk a little bit about maybe, you know, how you approach short-term goals in agency, long-term, personal versus professional? Yeah, I think that we really need to look at what's realistic. And I know we're going to talk a little bit about smart goals soon, but really, does it make sense? And is it something we can accomplish or is it an ultimate fantasy that's just going to overwhelm and stress everybody out, Mm -hmm. right? What are the resources we have? What kind of commitment can we give to it? And does it make sense for right now? We can have amazing ideas and we know that it's a great thing for the agency, but maybe that's something that's six months or 12 months down the road and we need to focus on some shorter term goals now to set everybody up for success in the long run. So a lot of times when we go into agencies, they're like, well, I want this and I want this and I want this and I want this and I know we could do this. And I'm like, yes, we can. But first, let's get the data cleaned up and see where we're at and spending our time. Let's get everybody logging in things into the system in a consistent way. Let's make sure that all of our clients are being contacted before their renewal and that we have a clear process for how we renew policies in our management system. Then we can look at launching this or doing that or working on this really great idea. So I think the short term is things that are smaller or a little more bite-sized pieces that can be part of a bigger goal or that we have the resources available for now. But we can also look at as we hire key people, we can start bringing in some of those longer term goals. And then when we start balancing personal versus professional, how much time and energy is everybody really able to invest? Because we all have things going on at home, right? Work is half of our life, but home is the other half. So where do we find that balance? And where do we say, I'm going to go ahead and put this quarter and maybe take a little time away from family or friends or home or whatever, so that I can get to the next level at work. But That means next quarter, I'm going to focus a little bit more on family or friends or home and not so such a push at work, right? There's no right or wrong answer. We just need to define that and set it and make it clear so that it's clear to everybody on the team. And we're setting the expectation that everybody can look at and say, where are we at with, or did we achieve or not achieve? And what does success look like? Yeah, I also think, too, we should also be super champions of people who do have personal goals. Like if someone wants to run a marathon or, you know, like they're going like to school at night or there's something that they really want to accomplish, because I feel like if you could have that supportive work family, because not everybody has that at home either. right? Right. So if you could be like, hey, somebody wants to stop smoking or somebody wants to, you know, walk at lunch, like I'm here for it, (laughs) you know, like. I think sometimes as you become an adult, it becomes harder and harder to hit your personal goals, but it also robs you of this like light you have when you're in your 20s of like, I could do anything. When you become old, you're like, well, it's going to (laughs) require like like I'm tired or I'm this or I don't have the money. And we become like all these things. But I don't know when I was 20, I could figure out how to do anything with like $13 and like bubble gum, (laughs) you know, like, (laughs) like, you know, maybe I had more energy. I don't know. The older you get, the harder you get. But I do think you to champion people's like you know personal goals whether it's something hard like they have to quit a habit or somebody wants to get in shape or someone wants to learn a language or i think it's so cool when you really sit down and hear people and what their personal goals are how like fun it is to be there and be like you did it <laughs> you know everyone can oh, people the accomplish their personal goals they just become better for our organization too totally and it's a confidence thing right like people feel like i could do it like like my personal goal this weekend was to champion netflix <laughs> <laughs> netflix was on my team saying are you still there many times 
So there's a kind of a, a goal framework that's like universal. It's called the SMART goals, right? Specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, time bound. I think many people have seen this before, right? But I'm going to just even tell you like that's super important, but you need to write them down and put them in your office everywhere people see them. I can't tell you how many agencies we walk into and it's like, what's the goals? I don't know. But the owner's like, oh, here they are. (laughs) And like, well, if you can't recite your own goal, guess what it means? Nobody knows that. Nothing. Nothing. I think another reason why people shy away from goals is that accountability. Well, if I set them, what happens if we don't hit them? Well, we learn, right? One, like I learned, okay, so now we can go back and say we didn't hit our goal. Why? What's the major cause of action here? And maybe it's we didn't have enough leads. We didn't make enough outbound phone calls. I didn't stay up with my renewal calls. So retention slipped. We lost a person. So we were down a body, which made it harder. Like it's not judgment. It's just let's go back through it. What happened? And then we say, all right, so we're down a body. Maybe we need to adjust the goal. That makes sense. Or, hey, we found somebody. We need to readjust and go backwards. So I think a lot of times we have to realize that the goals are not recommendations. They have to be something that we come in every single day and live, eat, sleep, and breathe. And there has to be some consequences when they don't go according to plan, right? Like you're going to set your whole marching orders on things. It also is identifiable, too, that when you set the goals, They can't just be pie in the sky. Bobby alluded to this earlier. They need to be routed in some kind of metrics. So Mm -hmm. many times I'll walk into an agency and it'll be like, what's the sales goal? And they tell me a number that is so laughable. (laughs) And I'm like, (laughs) what? I'm sorry. What what was that number again? Is that revenue? And they're like, oh, no, premium. I'm like, so that's all they do. They just sell insurance, right? Yes, but they're not hitting their goal. I'm like, so what do they do all day, you know? And there's always a multitude of things, but I'm not going to get that person who maybe has a smaller by half of what I would recommend sales goal to get up there overnight. So we have to develop a plan of like, hey, they need to be here. They need to be here. They need to be here in order to really kind of function. Another key point, and Stephen, I'm going to hit you on this one, is you set your goals, okay? And this is where I think a lot of agencies miss. And this is why I'm so psyched about our strategic planning workbook. We set our goal, but then we also have to go back and say, how are we going to get there? Right. So I think a lot of times people on the front line get a little overwhelmed. Like we have this big goal, but what are we, how, like, do I get training? Is there a plan? Is there a resource? Are we going to spend more on something? Like I will do as instructed, but I need, I need the user manual for how we're going to hit said goal. Right. So Mm -hmm. Stephen, how important is it to create that action plan? And where do you recommend agencies start? Start at the beginning. Just kidding. <laughs> Again, no, Simon we, Sinek says start with the end in mind. So, uh, you're well, yeah, start with the right. end in mind, but then we have to write down steps that we need to achieve the goal. So, I think again, it's, it's creating the action plan really comes up with sitting down and saying, Here's where we want to be. So yes, with the end goal in mind, but what are all those little steps along the way that are going to have to happen to get us there? But we have to be looking at some of the challenges as well so we can come up with a plan. So I think that breaking it down into manageable tasks makes it more visionary for the team and makes it more visionary for everybody that's participating. But it also helps us celebrate along the way all those little wins because if each step is a win, that we're accomplishing, that we know we're getting closer to the end goal. So like we do quarterly rock and we've had to learn, or I've had to learn at least, here's what needs to happen by the end of the quarter. But to get there, there's probably 30 different steps that need to happen. And it used to be like, well, by the end of the quarter, here's what we need. And I'd be like, I got this. And then it would get to the end of the quarter and I hadn't, I hadn't gotten it. So now it has to be like, Week one, this needs to be accomplished. Week two, week three, week four, week five, so that when we're checking in, it's like, am I on track or not to achieving all those little pieces that add up to the big picture at the end? And if I'm ahead of the game, great, let's push forward and get it done. But if I'm behind, what do we need to move around or reschedule so that it can get back on track? And Bobby, what do you think about having like, hey, what's the off track plan? Because sometimes when things get off track, people get emotional, right? It's like, well, you know, here's the thing. We had bad storms and then Betty had her gallbladder out and then 
you know, I would, I had, I had the flu. And so, you know, it just, all these things happen and I'm like, okay, but everybody's still depending on things to be hit for bonuses, et cetera. So what do you think about creating some like <laughs> off track plans and, and how to make yeah. it work? I think there's always going to be something. There's always going to be something that is going to derail us. We have to stay focused on where are we going? So I think, you know, Stephen mentioned, you know, breaking it down by week. And with with sales producers, we break it down by day. How many calls should I be making per day to get X number of appointments to close this number of sales? So the further we can break that down. So I know that if Betty Jo calls out today, I'm going to have to move those 20 calls that I was going to make today to tomorrow. And now I still got to make those 20 calls. It doesn't mean that they go away. So we just need to then learn how to redistribute that. But I think when we can have the facts, we're not focused on the feeling of, you know, oh, well, this happened, or I was shorthanded, or I was snowed in, or whatever it is, you know, what are the facts telling me? The facts are telling me that I didn't make enough calls to fill my sales pipeline. And so now how do I beef that up? How do I pump that up? How do I then get my team to help me? And it doesn't have to be difficult conversations. When we're operating our business off of off of facts, the conversation is not difficult. It's just, here's the facts, here's the proof. How do we help you? Either the person wants to step up and do that thing or they won't. And then that'll just tell us who they are. And are they on the team or not on our team? I also think too, okay, so you got the flu and you were out for a week. You should have been ahead of schedule, right? Like it shouldn't be coming down to these close calls all the time. You know, I think that that's another really big key to success is realizing that all the goal, everybody should be looking to hedge the goal to get ahead because when you have that bad month, you have enough bandwidth to rebound. If you're just getting by every month and you're sandbagging to the next month, that's BS. Well, and I think to that point too, is like, we can't stop doing the things that made us successful to get there, right? I can't say, hey, I want to lose 50 pounds. I lose that 50 pounds and I go back to my old habits. Correct. You won't keep We got to keep doing the things that we were doing that made it successful to get us to that place We and move, keep moving forward. Absolutely. So if you guys want to learn more about how to create your goals, our strategic planning workbook has a whole goal setting section, then how to break them down, like Bobby said. So what do you need to do every week? What do you need to do every month? Because it feels a lot easier that way. And we even have a whole section of what to do if you get off track, like that week you have the flu. Okay, I need to come back and you need to sit down and recreate, recraft your game plan. I might need to put in more effort because I was out. Or what do you do to go ahead and keep motivated? Like I am a big believer of like, how good is it going to feel when I can do X, Y, Z? Or if you're in sales and you're listening to this, what am I going to do with the money? Like, I love salespeople to have that freaking money spent. <laughs> but away, like for their dream house or for the car, right? Because we're all not working hard to sit there and not do anything with it. A vacation, you know, whatever it is. And, you know, it's different for everybody. My whole thing is freedom. Like, I don't want to have to worry about, you know, going to dinner or paying my mortgage or, you know, any of those things. Like, I just want to be in a situation where I don't have to think about money because I've had to think about money for a large percentage of my life. And it's very <laughs> stressful. <laughs> I like it to be there and then me to be able to go do the thing. So if I get sick, it's not a, it's not a huge or a disaster. But for everybody that's different, I mean, don't get me wrong. I do want a private plane. But I don't have that kind of money yet. <laughs> oh. when, when I do, everybody will know. <laughs> America will have some new aviators. <laughs> She'll be rocking her best life. She will. She'll have her own dog bowl on the plane. There will be signs. <laughs> there will be signs. Stephen, I'll get you a flight attendant outfit. <laughs> Ooh, hey. <laughs> you know. Beef outfit with gray goose, nothing else. <laughs> I make a mean martini. <laughs> so, be like, like it'd be that, and like Chick Fil A. I'd be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Those chicken sandwiches are delicious. Anyway, live in the life. 
Go get your strategic planning workbook so you too can get your own private plane or whatever makes you happy at the end of the day. So thank you, Bobby and Stephen, for joining us and we will see you all in the next podcast.